Hello everyone, welcome to Carnivorous Plants Hub. Uh, today we are going to be talking about some common Venus flytrap myths and misconceptions that I see super commonly among the, the carnivorous plant community. Oftentimes I see these myths and misconceptions uh, on the forums, a lot of beginners asking these questions, uh, Facebook groups, uh, any type of public groups. Also I get a lot of these misconceptions in my comments. So I just kind of wanted to address some of them today, go over them with everyone, and maybe give some uh, some good information so that you can make a good buying decision or good care decisions for your Venus flytraps. If you find this video helpful, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Also if you give this video a like, that helps me out greatly. I'd really, really appreciate it. But let's go ahead and jump into these eight common Venus flytrap myths and misconceptions. Number one here, and the first one I want to talk about is blue Venus flytraps. Really when it comes down to it, there are none. Uh, you might find some purple, maroon, green, yellowish, greenish, reddish, all, all different shades of red, uh, but you are not going to find any blue Venus flytraps. So if you see an ad that advertises blue Venus flytraps like this one here that we're looking at, uh, please ignore it. These are just terribly photoshopped photos, and the way that they actually get away with it is by this disclosure popping up right down here. Uh, for sure, received plant may vary from the one you see on the picture. All plants differ from each other. So basically what they're saying there is that what you get may not be what you receive. And I think that's kind of how they get around it and they're able to sell these on eBay and Amazon and, and all that. But please ignore anything that has blue Venus flytraps in it, just immediately get away from and avoid. Another huge misconception that I see all the time is that Venus flytraps are these really exotic tropical plants that come from the jungle that really just isn't true. It's completely untrue. Well, I guess that's not completely untrue. They are pretty exotic. They're pretty cool plants, but they are not they are not tropical plants, and that seems to be where the misconception comes in a lot. They don't grow in the deep jungles of the Amazon, and that, that's where a lot of people think that these come from. They're actually native to about a 90 mile radius around Wilmington, North Carolina. They grow in very sunny and coastal wetland savannas. So they're not even necessarily a bog plant, but we're gonna talk about that more here in a little bit. These plants actually can even be exposed to freezing temperatures and they often will see snow. And they do go through a winter dormancy period where they store up a lot of their energy in their rhizomes and then they come back in the springtime. So if they were a tropical plant living in a tropical location, they wouldn't be able to go through that cold dormancy period and to store up that, that energy that they need. So the fact that they're a tropical plant is just completely false. The next topic is not myth at all, it's 100% fact. California carnivores is one of the most trusted and knowledgeable carnivorous plant nurseries around. I've learned so much from them over the last few years and I really appreciate having access to their YouTube channel. I've recently been given the opportunity to partner with them and offer all my viewers an exclusive 10% discount when you order from their online nursery. They have a massive selection and sell most carnivorous plants year round. Simply use the code CPHUB when you check out to get the 10% discount. To see their selection of plants, click the link in the description and get excited for your next batch of plant mail. The next uh, myth and misconception here may be one of the most popular ones, and it's that Venus flytraps grow well on windowsills. I always get that one person that calls me out for this one. Yes, one out of 500 people have probably had success growing a Venus flytrap on a windowsill. Usually this means that they have a window that is old and doesn't filter out any of the UV and is probably south facing and gets sun all day. Window sills are not a good advice for beginning growers. Newer windows are designed to filter out a lot of the stuff that we as humans don't really want or need, but Venus flytraps do. Also, a windowsill doesn't usually get the 12 to 14 hours of sun a day required for Venus flytraps to thrive. If at all possible, avoid windowsills. Try to keep them in full sun if possible or a strong grow light as an indoor alternative. The next Venus flytrap myth or misconception is definitely that the Venus flytraps belong in terrariums. This is a giant misconception. People really get defensive about this one. Uh, most of the confusion with terrariums start with how people receive their Venus flytraps. Most of them are packed in a terrarium-like enclosure, not because they need the high humidity, but because it helps them not shift around in transit. The death cubes, as they're often referred to, are not meant to be a permanent home. People often take them out of their death cubes and put them in a small terrarium that they purchased off Amazon. They look wonderful at first. A Venus flytrap in a glass enclosure is actually quite the sight, but most people come to the forums or Facebook groups quickly when they see that the health of their plant has quickly deteriorated. One of the biggest issues is they require a winter dormancy period, which is almost impossible to give them in a terrarium. And despite popular belief, more on this in a minute, Venus flytraps do not like super wet conditions as they're super sensitive to rotting. Both the crown and the roots can rot 
if constantly exposed to water and wet conditions. The terrarium myth has even become sort of a joke in the online carnivorous plant community. A snarky Facebook group titled, Is that a Venus flytrap in a terrarium? has gathered a small following. This is a place to post photos and videos that people post as newbies with their flytraps in terrariums. Can Venus flytraps work in terrariums? Sure, but you ha better have a really good understanding and knowledge of how terrariums work and a very good knowledge and understanding of how Venus flytraps need to be grown. You can make it work, but it's a very advanced move and I recommend people new to carnivorous plants completely avoid it. There are much better options for growing your Venus flytraps than terrariums. Another really popular misconception is that Venus flytraps grow in a bog or swampy conditions. People often misunderstand the growing conditions for Venus flytraps. They hear the word bog and assume this means that Venus flytraps just sit in muddy, swampy, boggy conditions all day. This is absolutely not true and it's not how they grow at all. Venus flytraps' ideal growing conditions consist of a well-drained soil on the top but access to water down below. This means that in the wild, the crown of the plant doesn't sit in water all day but the roots have constant access to water. It's fine to let the Venus flytrap dry out a bit on top, but never let them go completely dry down below. The roots always need access to a little bit of water. Keeping them in a constant state of wetness will only expose the plant to mold, mildew, and possible rot, especially when the temperatures get lower. The only exception to this rule are places that are very hot and very dry all the time. Then you may want to keep them in water pretty much all the time. If you ever see a green algae type substance start growing on the, on the surface of your substrate, that's a really good indicator that you're probably giving your plant too much water and you may want to back it off a little bit before your Venus flytrap starts to rot. A huge myth for Venus flytraps is that they can actually hurt you when you're bitten. I've seen this as clickbait for many YouTube videos. You see a thumbnail showing a bloody finger that has just been bitten by a Venus flytrap. This is actually just straight up completely false. No part of the Venus flytrap can actually cut skin when it's shutting. The cilia and the small hairs on the inside are soft and won't inflict any pain or cause any lacerations. If you see someone bleeding from a Venus flytrap bite, they are lying and it's completely fake. It's just time to move on. Another misunderstanding that I see a lot is that Venus flytraps are actually toxic or poisonous to cats and dogs. This is another one that's just simply not true, which is actually a really good thing. Cats Cats can be real enemies of Venus flytraps. They really like to mess with them. Cats will ingest Venus flytraps from time to time. There has never been a documented instance of a Venus flytrap causing any harm to a cat or dog when ingested. The closest I've ever seen reported is maybe some minor stomach issues. With animals though, it's hard to even say that that was really the flytrap or if it was something else. I did reference the ASPCA website just to be sure. Venus flytraps are also listed as absolutely non-toxic here as well. The last misconception we're going to talk about today is that Venus flytraps like eating meat or other human food. This one's kind of funny and it's absolutely just false. Uh, I've seen uh, some YouTube videos out there of people feeding them ground beef or even like strawberries. Venus flytraps do not want this type of food. They only really want insects. Even with insects, they're kind of picky. Nothing too hard like a hard shell beetle or too soft like an earthworm. Those things can actually do harm to your Venus flytrap as well. Feeding your Venus flytrap the wrong things like beef or strawberries, that kind of stuff, is just going to cause that, that fly trap to potentially rot and die. So it's really important that you don't do that. The food that you give them is not going to pass on any nutrition or help the Venus fly trap at all. The other thing too is that when insects are caught and, and given to a Venus fly trap or when a Venus fly trap catches a live insect, that insect wiggling around on the inside after the trap closes creates a secondary response. And that secondary response is required for the Venus fly trap to actually release the digestive enzyme so that they can actually get the nutrition that they need from that insect. So it's really, really important that they're only fed insects when it really comes down to it the housefly is the absolutely best or like a mealworm those kind of things are really really good for feeding your Venus flytrap all right well I just wanted to thank everyone for uh, checking this video out again if you thought this was helpful make sure to like the video subscribe to my channel all that stuff helps me out a ton I, I'm uh, I really wanted to make sure and clear up a lot of these misconceptions and myths that go around I see a lot of new people asking these questions, so I just wanted to clear it up in a video. Hopefully you're able to catch this before buying your next Venus flytrap or buying your first Venus flytrap so that you're aware of some of these myths and misconceptions so you don't fall trapped to some of these kind of silly things. But thank you so much for being here. I really, really appreciate it. Make sure to subscribe so you can see some of my future videos, and I really, really hope to see you in my next video. Bye.